Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, a.k.a. Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Two Cent Nintendo Slash Gaming video for this week, for the week of August 23rd to the 29th, where I take a look at some of the stories and, that caught my attention and give you my thoughts and my opinion. And we got four to cover, basically, including DC Fandom, which basically um, cover a lot of big um, announcements ranging from the movie side, such as Wonder Woman um, 1984, um, Matt Reed's Batman, and of course the Snyder Cut of Justice League, to uh, two announcements, at least on the gaming side of it, being um, the, uh, let's see, if, what, what was it again? Oh yeah, the um, the Gotham Knights is one of them, and the Suicide Squads, so I'll be um, covering those. We're also going to be talking about the rumors that have been coming around, more Switch Pro rumors that have recently started to pop up, including one major newspaper publisher, Bloomberg, covering this as well. Uh, we do. We also want to talk about uh, two lawsuits that have happened, uh, one with EA being sued over their Ultimate Pack, and and supposedly the issue regarding Epic and Apple and all that and how that played out where it appears to be though that there seems to be a setback for Epic to a certain degree. And then I want to give my uh, response to the Direct Mini which let's just say the response to it overall has not been well um, great um, to be exact though. Um, but before we get started, before I get to the quick my to send part, I do want to give um, a quick announcement and that is next week um, there is a chance I probably won't do a, a my to send or a video review mostly because um, I'm going to be spending some time with um, some family this week. You know, take take some take some time off from shooting a YouTube video and all that stuff. I'll probably be back the week after but you know you always want to, you know, take a break every now and then. I mean, yes, burnout does happen, especially for those who do YouTube videos or do daily work or anything like that. It is important every once in a while to take a bit of a break. You know, clear your clear your head, relax for a little bit, or at least spend some time with friends and families, um, to be exact. So, just a quick heads up. Next week, there's a good chance you probably won't see a My Two Cent video or a video review. All right, but with that part done, we'll get to the quick My Two Cent part, which is basically stories that kind of have caught my um, attention, but I'm not going to go into a huge amount of details. Uh, the first one has to do that supposedly ratings for 19 games are apparently popped up that could be making their way to um, Google Stadia. Now, there are several games that have been on this list, including SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Um, Rehydrated could be making its way to Google Stadia. And while we don't have official confirmation, at least as far as I'm aware of, um, the fact that Sniper Elite 4 is on this um, list, and considering that Google um, announced that Sniper Elite 4 will be coming to the Google Stadia, I would say chances are more than likely this list s seems to be true. Again, I want to hear, wait to hear official confirmation, but I'm leaning towards more than likely it's going to happen. We also learned that one of the games released on the Nintendo eShop or released on the Switch, The Sinking City, apparently is still going to be on the Nintendo eShop despite it being delisted on other places though, like the PlayStation Store and so forth, mostly because of a legal Legal battle the publisher is facing right now. So for the moment, the Sinking City will still be available on the Nintendo eShop though. We also learned that Cobra Kai, the show that appeared on YouTube, that's basically a continuation of the the Karate Kid from the 1980s, is getting its own game. Basically, it looks like a beat, beat em up and judging by the trailer that I've seen so far with it, it looks like one of those quick cash grabs to me. I'm not really fearing it, feeling it with though. As much as I enjoyed the Karate Kid movies back in the 80s when I was a kid and all that stuff, I'm just not feeling it um, with this one. We also learned that the IP holders of Skullgirls um, basically are dissing themselves from Lab Game Studios following accusations against one of the staffers from, because of toxic behavior, mostly 
inappropriate comments or something like that so right now there's a little bit of issues going on with it basically from the developers of invincible and skull girls and all we also got a look at the first trailer for dragon dogma the anime that will basically appear um next month um on netflix though i'm curious to see how this one will work though given how well Castlevania did on Netflix and The Witcher, although The Witcher one's a live action. Um, I do have confidence this one probably will do well, but we'll have to wait and see and all that. So we'll see how this one it does. I mean, great that we're getting another Dragon Dogma, but I'm pretty sure most people would prefer a actual sequel to Dragon Dogma, an actual video game sequel to Dragon um, Dogma, though. We also learned that Nintendo supposedly, whether you like them, love them or hate them, whether you agree or disagree with them, is now basically the richest uh, Japanese company out there. So obviously, I mean, obviously they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, and mostly the Switch, given where the Switch is right now, it's certainly doing well um, for them. So kudos for them for being um, successful for where they are even though not everyone agrees with a lot of the decisions um, they made. We also learn about uh, some details about the upcoming Resident Evil series that is going to be on Netflix. Um, some of the claims is that supposedly there are two major synopolis. One has to deal with the daughters of one of the one of the main villains in the Resident Evil series, Albert Wesker. So I'm very curious to see how this one is going to play out. And I'm wondering, are they going to take the Castlevania and Dragon Dogma route um, with the Resident Evil series coming to Netflix? Or are they going to take the Witcher um, series um, approach and have it be in live action? So we'll have to wait and see, but I'll probably keep an eye on that one. We also learned that CD Projekt Red is doing a take on Pokemon Go with basically the Witcher Monster Slayer. It's basically, you know, like you find like, you know, monsters, you know, like with the Pokemon Go stuff. I haven't really played Pokemon Go at all. I mean, some can call this a quick cash rag and that might be true, but given the popularity of the Witcher, the Witcher is having lately, ranging from the third game to basically um, the supposedly successful Netflix series, doesn't surprise me on this one though we also learned that activision has released basically um their their next call of duty game called call of duty black ops cold war and all and judging by it though it looks interesting though um i like studying the history of the cold war it's a very interesting history along with world war ii being this is activision blizzard i have my doubts so I'm going to take a wait and see approach on this one. I'm not really, uh, I, I, given their history with the Call of Duty franchise lately and what they've been doing, I'm going to probably hold off on this one. I'll just take a wait and see approach. And then, of course, we had the recent um, Gamescom that happened, or at least the opening of it, that was basically all digital, which isn't surprising considering the whole situation with um, COVID-19 going on on and all and well while i didn't get a chance to read chance to see it though which is unfortunately i had some stuff to do we did hear some interesting announcements from it um some of the announcements we got were that jurassic world evolution is coming to the nintendo switch which will have which basically be all the dlcs and all i might try that one out though we learned that we learned that doom eternal will get their first dlc which is great but I'm still waiting for the future, for the faith of what happened to the Switch version of Doom Eternal. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if basically um, that got um, canceled or anything like that. And also, we also learned the games like, say, um, Lego Star Wars and Star Skywalker Saga, unfortunately, has now been delayed to spring of 2021, which is unfortunate, but you know what? It is what... It is what it is. So, I mean, if you want to check out what happened on the opening night, link will be in the description, all that stuff. The Jurassic World um, evolution thing, um, again, like I said, I might take a look at that one, see how that one um, plays out and all. <clears throat> okay, with the quick my two cent part now done, we'll get started with our first story. And this one has to do with um, the DC fandom. Now, um, I believe it was last week, though, or this, sometime this week, um, DC held, Warner Brothers held their DC fandom event, and they were basically showing off a lot of the stuff. Basically, 
what you know like movies and even some video games and all some of the movies they showed off as i mentioned were movies like wonder woman 1984 to matt reed's um batman and even you know the snyder cut of Ju the justice league movie though um as far as the justice league snyder cut though i'm very curious to see how that one's going to play out though because it's going to be interesting to see whether it's actually good or it's as awful as some folks out there have made it out to be but we'll find out when that one comes out i think next year on hbo max uh, Wonder Woman 84 is another movie I might take a look at, considering I enjoyed the first one. I definitely got a Captain America First Avenger vibe out of it, though. And the Matt Reed Batman one is kind of interesting, and it almost gives off the fact that this one could be, although we still have to wait to hear, it could be an R-rated one, which I wouldn't be against. I mean, if that's the direction they want to go with it, that would be very interesting. But also we saw... Um, also, they announced basically some video games, mostly two of them, though, and the two are basically the Gotham Knight and the um, one called Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Um, so, in terms of the Gotham Knight one, we learned a little bit about this from an article on CNET, links in the description. Um, it reads that co-op game Gotham Knights unveiled during DC fandom on Saturday. Okay, that was last week then. We'll let you play as Robin, Nightwing, Batgood, Batgirl, and Red Hood with Batman apparently out of the picture. It's developed by Warner Brothers um, Montreal, the team behind 2013's Batman Arkham Ar Origin and hits in 2021. The trailer shows that DC fandom finds Gotham in chaos after the apparent death of Bruce Wayne with his allies called to defend the city. We see heroes fighting together as they face off against a very scary Court of Owls. A gameplay um, de demo also showed Batgirl and Robin chasing down icy villains Mr. Freeze. And the developers hint at some degree customization options um, for the heroes, though. The developers hint at the game last Monday when it treated a video and linked to the Twitter account um, hashtag, um, not hashtag, at R3D AKT3D Redact. Re re Apologize, I'm not saying it correctly. With the number three replacing the E, the Court of Owls, a super creepy criminal secret society that manipulates Gotham City cities for centuries, first appeared in 2011. Batman's um, number three, similar tease with tweets back um, in January, though. So they basically showed off a little bit of the gameplay on that one, and I'm kind of mixed on this one a little bit though because. While it sounds interesting and all, um, I've heard stories, if it's basically going to be co-op and just like, and and so forth, maybe not as much as say like the single player games, like say the Arkham series to be exact, but I'll probably, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Maybe I have to see a little bit more of that to sort of come to my conclusion. But the one I will say that probably caught my attention more was the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Um, this one we've heard tease about Rocksteady's um, next game and all, and we finally got a little teaser or at least an image that showed, you know, Suicide Squad with Superman, and we finally got a chance to see, well, apparently right now only a cinematic trailer. So we don't know much in terms of gameplay and all, or at least we haven't seen actual gameplay footage or anything like that, but I will say, given how well Rocksteady has handled, you know, the Arkham series, I do have some hopes, but I still want to see some gameplay. Anyway, we do know a couple of things about the um, Kill the Justice League and all that stuff. Um, we know that they are set to release in 2022, so we still have some ways to go before the game ultimately um, comes out. But it's aiming to launch on the PS5 and Xbox Series X and PC in 2022. Um, apparently... We do now know that there will be four playable characters in Kill um, the Justice League, though. We know that Harley Quinn is going to be in it. Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, and King Shark um, is going to be in the game, though. We know that supposedly Superman is the villain in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, so it's going to be very um, interesting. The fact that Superman is in that they made Superman the villain in a way at the same time it kind of makes me wonder will Rocksteady do an actual Superman game at some point um, down the road um, 
Um, they also point out that we could see like other people going up against anti superheroes could include um, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, and Aquaman. <clears throat> we learn that we, that the game will also be one to four player co op, which is certainly nice. Um, the, from this article on CNET, oh, I mean Games Radar, they're saying that you can squad up with friends to take on evil evil Superman with up to four friends. The Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Rocksteady has confirmed you'll be able to switch between characters at will, jump to whichever squad member suits your play style. Single player mode affords the same option and you'll have full squad no, full squad no matter no matter mode you play with bots controlling the other unused characters. So nice to know that basically that the game can still be um is still single player though. The bots that could be a hit and miss because sometimes the, the AI might be good or the AI might be bad. So we'll still have to see how that plays out. But an interesting one that points out is that the Suicide Squad killed the Justice League is a continuation of the Arkhamverse. And according to what Game Radar is saying, it says, quote, Rocksteady's work on Batman's Arkham game is a lot of reason folks are so excited for the new Suicide Squad. So it's natural to wonder how it connects to the Arkham universe. And rather vaguely, Rockste Rocksteady confirms that it does exist in the same universe as the Arkham games, but doesn't clarify any further. This is a continuation of the Arkhamverse. A lot, a lot of thought, a lot of thought thread and storylines you're going to see come to fr fruition. So. The fact that it's a continuation, the fact that they're saying that um, it's a continuation of Arkham of the Arkhamverse or the Arkham series, though, is certainly nice. But at the same time, when they mentioned, when the article mentioned that we'll be up against other superheroes like Batman, though, I'm very curious because spoiler alert for those who haven't be beaten Arkham Knights, didn't Batman kind of, in a way, died at the end of? Arkham Knights and all, so I'm kind of curious to see what direction, how this is going to work out. Well, we'll have to wait and see, and I mean, the game is basically not going to come out until 2020, 2022, so we still have some ways to go before the game ultimately comes out. So, overall, I would say um, interesting what DC, what the DC fandom was in terms of the movie, so curious to see how the Snyder Cut of Justice League is going to play out. Curious to see how, if the Batman from Matt Reeves will get an R-rated, though. And out of the two games that they showed, um, again, I'll, I'll give, I'll have the benefit, I'll give Gotham Knights the benefit of the doubt. But I have to say, I'm more leaning towards Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, considering that, um, considering the fact that it's being developed by the Arkham team, though the folks at Rocksteady. Though I'm seem to, I'm more, a little bit more excited for that one than say um, the Gotham Knights one. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part two, and this one has to do with some new rumors that popped going up, pop popping up in regards to possibly a brand new switch or anything like that. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a new rumor in regards to the Nintendo Switch, as now there's a new one in regards to the whole Switch Pro or Switch 2. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware, though, that there's no denying the fact that the Switch has been very successful for the Nintendo. Last time it was reported, it's, they sold like around 61 million units worldwide, and it's certainly not out of the realm of the possibility that we could see this rich reach over to the Wii's lifetime sale, which is over, which is about 100 million units. I mean, it's. It certainly is possible, on the, so we'll have to wait and see if the, how that plays out, though. But along, but at the same time, we've heard many rumors about Nintendo basically doing a new Switch, like a Switch Pro or a Switch 2 and all that stuff. And while we have seen some stuff like a Switch Lite to basically the big Switch, the traditional Switch, um, getting basically maybe new components most likely to increase the battery life and all we haven't really seen the big kind of um 
really seen anything that pushes that it's going to be like an actual like switch to like a next generation switch or anything like that not to mention i feel that given nintendo's partner with nvidia and which is supposed to last for about two decades barring anything major happens though there's no denying the fact that i wouldn't be surprised if a switch to eventually happens though but apparently but every now and then we get rumors about the next switch and all that stuff and a new one has recently um popped up as well on top of that we've also got um the bloomberg um news bloomberg basically entering in the whole phase as well in an article first reported on nintendo life um, the original story that was published um, basically on the 24th on Monday, it reads that, quote, According to a new report from Taiwanese newspaper United Daily News, Nintendo could be set to launch a brand new Switch model early next year. Citing a number of hardware manufacturers involved in the product productions of current Switch models as its source, the, new, the newspaper notes that production of this new Switch console will begin as soon as fourth quarter 2020 with a launch plan for first quarter 2021. Early translation of the article suggests that the console will benefit from improved interactivity and display qualities. Um, um, rumors, um, rumors and reports surrounding the, a supposed Switch Pro, Pro, a Switch reversion boasting more powerful, more power and improved visual output, has been circulating for some times now. A Taiwanese report posted earlier this year and before the full impact of the coronavirus was felt, we should add, mentioned that a model may be launching in mid-2020, which obviously that didn't happen and all that stuff, though. Well, apparently another uh, Bloomberg basically picked up on it and it reads that it reads that quote Bloomberg's Takahashi has collaborated the report with from Taiwanese new pa- newspaper United Daily News stating that he has confirmed that he has confirmed the report of a new switch with pl- with people briefed on the strategy. He says that the pacification of the new machine has yet to be finalized though Kyoto based um, company um, has looked into including more computing power and 4K high definition graphics. I would say if Nintendo is truly going to add 4K um, to their Nintendo Switch, I think if, if that does happen, let's just say if that does ha- if if that does happen, I suspect more than likely it will be upscale games that could be upscaled to 4K. I just don't think they're going to do actual 4K like the way what, what we're going to see with the PS5 or the Xbox Series X. But um, I could be wrong on that. Um, anyway, continuing with the article, it says he adds that the launch of the new system will be comp- compute or with or followed by a slew of games from Nintendo itself and r- related outside studios. And that these games will address a wide range of players from casuals seeking small dose of escapism to more devoted fans and putting marathon um, gaming section. This focus of next year explains the relatively quiet software slate for 2020, though. Um, fresh report related to Switch Bros has triggered very positive reactions from analysts with Ace Research Institute's an- analysts telling Bloomberg that the Switch will suppress the Wii's um, sales even without an upgrade, and the sound of hardware update plans will even allow the Switch to suppress the um, Nintendo DS um, handheld. So, like with anything with these um, rumors, though, um, I'm going to take this one with a grain of salt. I mean, it is possible Nintendo could release an actual Switch Pro or Switch 2 um, next year. I mean, given that the Switch came out in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, um, 2021, next year it will be like four years old, I believe, for the Nintendo Switch. And it is possible Nintendo could put out like an actual Switch Pro or Switch 2. At the same time, they they can also at the same time risk um, splitting the audience, and that's something I think Nintendo would want to avoid. But as far as this one, um, I'm still iffy about this rumor, especially with the 4K high definition graphics. I could see them doing upscaling to 4K, but I don't know about 4K high definition graphics. But I could be wrong on that. But as but I will take this with a rumor with a grain of salt, especially since it seems as though some new FCC um, FCC um, f- filing um, basically for this possibly for the Switch, it, it may not lead to a Switch 2 or a Switch Pro. Um, according to uh, MyNintendo.com, they're reading that quote. 
On the 23rd of August, Nintendo filed a few requests um, with the FCC, which is an independent agency of the United States government that regulates communications by television, wire, satellite, and cable across the U.S. These changes are focused on Nintendo Switch in in INNARDS, specifically the SOC, System of a Chip, and Memory Component. Due to these change, Nintendo is also said to be changing the CPU board. Um, they said they sent an official letter to the FCC for um, the changes, though. Um, these fillings um, only port to point towards a possibility of change to the inside of the console and doesn't detail anything about amendments to the look of the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo stated, quote, um, um, it, <clears throat> excuse me. Since there is no change in shape of the enclosed and the component layout related to the RF characteristics, including the antenna between the original model and the new model, the SA, SAR testing on the new model is not required and is waived. Understandably, though, um, it's difficult not to think that a Switch Pro or beef up console is in the work, especially as Bloomberg reported on such a potential happening earlier this week. And According to Nintendo World Report, um, they point toward. They said that quote. It seems as though that these, these, these FCC feelings could be just updating the Switch developer kit. And as they re released on the updated, they said quote. Further inspection of the FCC document now suggests that the listing refers to development kit hardware for the Nintendo Switch and not the Nintendo Switch itself. It's so it's still not clear why Nintendo is making modification to its development kits, whether it's a root routine update or components or in or an indication of more substantial change plans for the console. So it's possible it could be the Switch Pro or Switch 2, but it could also mean just it may not mean anything at all. So for me, like anything, I'm going to take this one with a huge grain of salt. While I have no doubt that a Switch Pro or Switch 2 will eventually happen, it's unclear if they will happen um, next year. But I mean, it is possible, though. Um, this year, though, um, the Switch is going to be going up against the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. And it's going to be really interesting to see how well that system does especially once those systems have come out though i mean the switch has been doing well especially against the ps4 and the xbox one although those systems came out way before even the switch came out it could be a different situation with it is possible though we'll have to wait and see but it could be a different situation with the ps5 and the xbox series x so overall I'm going to still take these rumors with a huge grain of salt, though. We've heard these rumors before, and they don't always pan out to be true or anything like that. But with but with the PS5 and the Xbox Series X coming up, it is possible we could see maybe a... There's always that possibility a Switch Pro or a Switch 2 could happen um, next year. But for now, I'm treating this what it is, and that is basically... Um, it's nothing more than a rumor um, at this time. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part three. And this one has to do with several lawsuits, ranging from lawsuits that EA is facing and lawsuits that basically Apple and the whole lawsuit between Apple and um, Epic. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of our uh, My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be talking about basically lawsuits, particularly in the gaming world and all that stuff. Um, for anybody who has been, who has seen, you know, read or read articles about the well, what's going on in the gaming world lately, law, you've probably seen, you know, lawsuits fly out here and there. We've seen it ranging from folks um, suing Sega because they were misled about game about what happened with Alien Colonial Marines. We've seen lawyers contact people who have felt like they were basically conned or anything like that, like when Fallout 76 and the whole canvas bag kind of situation. So there have been plenty of lawsuits happen here and there. And I'm sure most of you have heard the recent one, which involves Fortnite with Epic and, you know, Apple and all that stuff. Personally, I'm not a... I personally, I think 
the lawsuit is ridiculous and you can there are certainly some issues with that but apparently though we now have basically two lawsuits to talk about and the first one we'll do though has to do with ea and this one has to do with their ultimate pack basically their microtransactions and all that stuff and they've been under fire with that a bit before in the past look at star wars battlefront 2 and the whole controversy that created though so in the first one in regards of ea in an article from game industry buzz it reads that quote a class action lawsuit has been filed against electronic arts um asserting that the ultimate team mode in the sport game break breaks gambling law the lawsuit has been filed in the Northern District of California and specifically cites that the state gambling laws are proof that games such as FIFA and Madden should be governed by them. The plaintiff, um, basically who represents a proposed class, a class of more than 100 other individuals according to the court um, documents. Um, this individual is calling for a jury and damage of $5 million. The case claims that EA relies on creating addictive behaviors in consumers to generate um, huge revenues. Um, this person asserted, um, this person himself asserted Ultimate Team, compelling him to spend money, having spent more than $600 in both FIFA and Madden since 2001. Um, that certainly isn't as awful as, say, somewhere I've heard some people have spend up maybe up to like a thousand dollars and even more um the, uh, anyway continue on it says um ea's ultimate team packs are loot boxes the case reads buying the packs are nothing more than a gambling bet purchasing using real money the ultimate team packs are simply wage on completing randomized chance within the game to win vulnerable professional players and other items from the ea game virtual sports team this, the lawsuit says, falls under California's definition of illegal gambling devices as a machine, ap ap aperture, or device. Something of value is given to given to play, and the players may receive something of value by elements um, of chance. Um, the, this person is being represented by the same law firm that filed a similar case action action lawsuit over loot boxes against Apple earlier this year, though. And this is EA has been no stranger to this kind of controversy. We saw how other countries have sort of stepped in, like we, or so to say, countries have stepped in, like Belgium, over the whole loot box things uh, situation. Though um, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. But honestly, I, if you're asking my honest opinion, I know some will disagree. I hope the judge rules um, against EA on this. I think it should send a message to a lot of these companies who are constantly focusing on microtransaction and recurring user spending and so forth like really getting completely like greedy over this so i'm hoping the judge rules um against ea uh, certainly on this one though so we'll have to wait and see about that one in the meantime we've also heard about i'm sure most of you are aware about as i mentioned this earlier the whole lawsuit between epic and um apple and this had to do with epic sort of bypassing you know apple pay and some of the stuff that has spawned into a huge lawsuit kind of a situation though though many people believe um as much as some people think apple's greedy they think epic is greedy as well and i think both of them have their shared criticisms but recently a judge has ruled on this whole case or at least for now has ruled while the lawsuit sort of continues to proceed in an article from CBS, it reads that, quote, that the Apple App Store will remain Fortnite free for now. And the article reads that, quote, a district judge ruled that Apple can continue to keep the popular game Fortnite from the iPhone maker's App Store. Fortnite maker Epic Games sued Apple last week in an effort to get the game restored to the iPhone download hub. The multiplayer game, which, which players compete in a last-person standing shootout set in a cartoonish world, had not been available in the app, Apple App Store since mid-August. The game was removed after Epic Games enabled a function that lets use, users make in-game purchases from virtual weapons or other items directly from Epic rather than through Apple's payment system. Apple, which charges as much as a 30% commission on transactions, requires developers that use its App Store to route all payments through the Apple system. Google has also removed um, Epic's hit game from its App Store over direct payment dispute. As of right now, neither Apple or Google are allowing users to download and install for Fortnite on phones through their digital marketplace. A Apple, Epic has filed a suit against Google as well. 
The growing fight between Epic and Apple as well as Google has drawn the interest of antitrust experts who have been increasingly concerned about the growing control Apple, Google, and other tech giants have over the U.S. economy. Congress held a high-profile hearing last month featuring the CEO of Apple and Google um, and Google's parent Alphabet, as well as Amazon and Facebook, as to whether the nation's largest tech companies um, should face harsher antitrust um, regulations. Epic's lawsuit against Apple, Apple seems to reinforce the narrative in, the, in its lawsuit. Epic argued that Apple is engaging in anti-competitive behavior in its App Store, which is a major distributor of games and apps for the Apple device. The game maker also took to social media to rally fans its, to its calls, tweeting that Epic defies um, the app, app Store monopoly. Um, the issue Epic raised in its suit are in line with the concerns that lawmakers touched on in their recent hearing, saying the saying the antitrust um, expert, um, a, this who's Eleanor Fox, a professor at New York University School of Law. The problem, Fox said, is that the antitrust laws, as they are, formulate now favors market-dominated firms and do little to regulate prices. If all that Epic is care about. If all that Epic's case is about is whether Apple chain charges too much, then it's, then that's allowed under antitrust law, says Fox. Antitrust laws do not block price gouging. Um, and according to what it says, according to in a, pre, in a preliminary hearing late Monday, um, U.S. District Court Judge um, said that Apple would be allowed to keep Fortnite off its app store while Epic's case against the iPhone makes process. The judge, though, said her ruling was limited to Fortnite and Apple's decision um, to remove another of Epic's offering, the Unreal Engine, a tool popular with other app developers, was not allowed along with other forms of retaliation. Apple has chosen to act severely, and by doing so, has imp impacted non-parties and third-party um, developer ecosystem. So basically, what it means is that right now, it looks as though Apple is going that Apple can keep Fortnite off the App Store for the moment. But as far as the Unreal Engine goes, they can't do that. They can't do what basically is an act of retaliation, though. Um, personally. I think this whole situation is sort of ridiculous, though. Um, I I do think that, to some extent, Apple, as much as I like using some of their products, I do think that they're getting maybe a, a little too greedy and going a little bit over their heads. So I really think that they need to change some of their policies. But I could say the same thing about Epic and some of their decisions that they have made, though. So I do think this whole situation is sort of ridiculous. So overall... EA is being sued for their ultimate team pack, though, and at least for now, though, um, Fortnite will not appear on the Apple App Store at the moment, though, but but Apple cannot prevent, um, basically, those who are using the Unreal Engine, which is owned by Epic, if they want to use that engine to make games for the App Store and so forth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to our fourth and final part. And this one has to do with the response in regards of the Direct Mini. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fourth and final part of our My Two Cent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at the August uh, Direct Mini that um, recently happened. Now, I'm sure most of you were aware, throughout most of August, though, there were rumors that Nintendo would be doing, like, another Direct and all that stuff. And one of the rumors were later picked up by VentureBeat, although they kind of said, sort of said, the person who wrote it said to keep your expectations in check on this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, this was the week that we did have a Direct. It was a Direct Mini, and, well... If you didn't keep your expectations in check, you probably came away um, extremely um, disappointed with this one, though. So basically what they revealed um, at this Direct Mini, according to a roundup from MyNintendo.com, it reads that what the games they showed off were Just Dance 2021, um, World of Tank Blitz, um, a free-to-play online multiplayer game, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memories, which honestly, based on the footage that I've seen so far, it looks like something taken that you would see on the 
um, you know, on the App Store or something like that. Uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris um, 2. Uh, Taco no Tachasis or Rhythm Adventure Pack, though. Um, Big Rumble Boxing Creed's Champion. Um, Jump Force Deluxe Edition. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicle Remaster Edition. Um, Collection of Saga Final Fantasy Legend. Um, Captain Tisnuba. If I'm saying the name correctly, I apologize if not. Um, Rise of the New Champion ch Championships ch or Champions. Minecraft Dungeon DLC and the Fuser from Harmonic Studios, the creators of Rock Band. And honestly, uh, all I have to say is outside of maybe Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, which I did like the first one though, um, possibly um, the collection of Saga Final Fantasy Legends, maybe Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles though, I, I have to say this one was kind of, I have to admit, was kind of disappointing, was sort of disappointing though. Compared to the indie world that we had though, which there were certainly a lot of games there that actually kind of interest me in a way, and I was kind of disappointed how this one was handled. This one was just, like the last Direct Mini though, it just, it, it kind of gave the impression, I kind of have to agree with some of this though, is that it gave the impression that Nintendo kind of it doesn't have something for doesn't have anything for fall or holiday 2020 it's like they they got nothing to show now some people may point to because maybe the COVID-19 has thrown everything into a loop and I will say that's possibly is true and all but it, it this presentation just wasn't that good and all that I mean some games were I mean it was the way I mean it was presented fine but what they showed wasn't really that great I mean the font the Kingdom Hearts one I would rather see a port of Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 come to the Nintendo Switch than this this one really does not interest me in any way um, possible though um and World of Tanks, I mean, great if you like that game. Um, I'm not really big on that one. It's just, it, it felt like Nintendo has, like I said, it felt like Nintendo really doesn't have anything for the holidays. That maybe they have given up on 2020. Now, to be fair, that may not be 100% true. Maybe they do have something ready to show for the holidays. I mean, after all, Nintendo does have a history of keeping stuff um, to their chest. Sometimes that works, but there are times that can also backfire at the same time. So, but uh, either way, though, I will say my overall takeaway from the um, the direct meeting that happened was, <clears throat> if I had to rate it, though, I mean, on a scale of one to five, I'm going to give this one a. I would say like a one. I mean, the only really good thing for me was Puyo Puyo Tetris and two, and that was basically it i mean none of the other stuff really i mean some of the stuff may have caught my attention but other than that and maybe the the final fantasy legend games i mean maybe that but other than that that's basically it the, the, i i think it's just really disappointing that um that the last two direct minis have sort of been in my view kind of a dud now i won't go as far as i'm freaking out or losing sleep over it or anything like that but I do kind of admit, though, this one wasn't exactly um, great at all, especially when compared to the indie world that that happened uh, recently, though. <clears throat> okay, um, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about um, the DC fandom, though? Um, did you like what was shown at the DC fandom? Um, what about the games like Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League? Do any of those games interest you in any way? Or do one of those interest you? Or do none of them interest you at all? What do you think about these rumors about a Switch, especially one that could basically display 4K and all? Do you think these rumors are true? Do you think this is a time that Nintendo should release a more powerful Switch in any way? Or do you think a lot of these rumors, you think a lot of these rumors are maybe getting a little bit out of hand or you don't really believe these rumors at all? 
What are your thoughts about these two um, lawsuits? Do you think EA should be sued over the Ultimate Team Pack at all? Or do you think that this that lawsuit is ridiculous? What about the ruling that the judge made in terms of basically Fortnite is stay off, it's not going to be on the App Store, at least for the time being? Do you think the judge made the right decision? Do you think that judge made the wrong decision in any way? Um, do you think this is the last we'll hear about this whole situation? Or do you think there is more to come and what are your thoughts about the direct mini um did you like what was shown at the direct mini or do you feel like it was a disappointment and all um do you agree with what i said in this video do you disagree do you have a difference of opinion um as always sound off on the comment section below let me know what you think and if you like this video then i hope you hit the like button i would appreciate it and i hope you do subscribe to my youtube channel um if you do make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos i put up also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!